Hi oh, guys, it's Mike here from Chaos Bushcraft Down Under. Today I thought I'd do a run, run through on the MSR Micro Rocket. Now I've been getting to know this fella for the last sort of six months and I've been really impressed with it. Now I took it to, uh, to the United Kingdom to walk the Wainwrights coast to coast path. And it did a fabulous job of uh, powering me up those hills in the Lake District, keeping me in teas, coffees and a few pot noodles on the days. Now, I wasn't camping out, so uh, I didn't need a serious cook system. So I took my trusty MSR title kettle in this decor container as I normally do, with the uh, inner cup, which the stove nests in really well. So the whole system comes in this little container, and it's a snug fit. There's certainly no wiggle room in it, and I actually find it difficult to fit on sometimes. Now the whole kit weighs in at 125 grams. The box weighs 36 grams. Now I think there's a bit of room for improvement there. I think MSI could do with making it into a cup. That would be a good idea. The stove weighs in at 76 grams and the uh, piezo igniter or sparker weighs in at 12 grams. So here it is there folded up. So there's folding legs which makes it a lot more compact than its predecessor. So there it is folded out. Now, um, unlike its predecessor, there's only the one o-ring seal to the gas cylinder. Whereas the older rocket had an inner and an outer seal. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about that. So, of course, it fits any of the uh, the gas cylinders with this thread system. So, making sure you turn it off before you screw it on, otherwise you have gas squirting out everywhere. Now, with all these stoves that use very, very fine jets, keeping the stove and the threads and the cylinders clean is important, otherwise you may well block up a very small jet. There she is there. As I said, I usually use it with my Titan kettle. Now, a lot of the micro stoves that have bales, especially those with titanium bales, they tend to be very slippy, whereas this has a, a good amount of uh, grip to it, probably because of the small contact points and the way they're angled down. And... Um, I wouldn't like to use it on too much of a slope, but it certainly has a bit of grip. Now, the igniter, which I think is fantastic. Now, at home I never had any problems with this. After three days on the trail, it stopped working. And the reason it stopped working is I was packing it away in, a, in that uh, cook kit you know, with wet pots and stuff. Now, it wasn't a problem because I had my ferro rod I used to light the stove with. So the old adage, two is one, one is none, came into play. Now it was partially my fault because I didn't buy a big light, which I normally do. Because I'd flown in and tried to throw out all my matches and blah blah. So this is a fantastic bit of kit, probably superior to the older stoves that had the ignited built on because they had a habit of melting. Now most of these little stoves don't have much flame control. Where this guy goes from a candle flame really, really pumping along. Now the little clip in the middle is designed to stop it being blown out and that's somewhat successful. But a good bust of wind and it will go out. Now when I was rolling around the UK I found this fella. Now it's not designed for this particular stove so I won't attest to its safety but uh, it fits nicely around this size cylinder. So it actually takes up no space. Now this stove, like all these open stove systems, suffers in the wind. Now that can be negated by putting it between your backpacks or find a sheltered spot because its performance drops off significantly when the wind's blowing. But this little windshield really does a uh, quite a champion job of it. But as I said, it's not designed for this stove. All in all, I think it's a great little stove for limited meals and I reckon you could push it out 
to uh, a two litre pot and uh, some reasonably uh, serious backpacking style mills. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye for now.